Joe joins us now. Hello, Joe. Hello, Joe. Nice to see you. Yes, lovely. <laughs> so, Joe, let's obviously talk about the the documentary. You can see there that it really, really affected you. Yeah. But how, how did you get involved in it in, in the first place? So, it all started from my mum, you know. When me and my sisters got to the age where we was out of, you know, out of school and looking after ourselves, she sort of decided that she had so much more to give as a mum that she wanted to give some back. So, she said to us that she wanted to get into foster caring and we were so proud and we are so proud of, of what she's done and what she's achieved and with the kids that she's had. Mm. Um, and then, you know, the government have, have asked for this independent review to have been made. That's just been, just been made, just been released. Um, and the documentary is basically looking at the, the, the care system. So I've been in the care system with my mum for like 15 years, but I don't know nothing about it. Mm. So we look... got in like a, with a fresh pair of eyes. Yep. Yeah, so it just sounded like a perfect opportunity for me to have a little look how it works. And I was devastated, mm. you know. Yeah, well, I was going to ask you, what shocked you? Can you give an example? of what you saw or what you learned during the making of the documentary? So, I met the, the children that have been through, through the care system and they're at the age now of, of between 16 and 18. And at 18, they have to leave the care system. That's it, they're done. Um, I mean, just a tool to leave? Well, the, yeah, the, there's, there's a little bit of support out there, but it's not, 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 not much assistance at all. Yeah. For an 18-year-old to, to kind of have to go into the big, bad world, you know, they've had a real troubled childhood. So I met these kids and it's the vulnerability that I felt from them, you know. They're so vulnerable mm -hmm. and they're so scared. Um, and I just, I couldn't, couldn't believe that this was going on and this is how the system is working. And it has been like this for the last 15, 20 yeah, years. Yeah, they're not getting to grips with it at all, are yeah, they? No. I mean, the, the one that really affected <clears throat> me was Carl. Yeah. Who, as you say, you, you went into the, the home that he lives in and he's very cosseted. You know, there's that amazing lady that runs it mm -hmm. and she's a bit like a mum to them all and she teaches them to cook and yeah. they go out and they have a curfew and they've got sort of stability and routine mm. and he's coming up to his 18th birthday and basically it's just going to be you See on your you own exactly. and I mean what 18 year old in a family situation normally mm. is out on their own at 18. I mean I can only speak for myself at 18 and I, I couldn't have lived by myself at mm. 18. I was making mistakes all the time but luckily for me I had my family, my mum, my sisters, my nan, all my family, my, my friend network around me. Now these mm. kids haven't so they might live down south and have been taken all the way up north. Mm. So they're completely detached from that. Well, there families. was a child that was... He was moved from the home at night time... At night and, time. ..and then got to there. They put his stuff in the rubbish bag? Yeah. In the bin and, bag? And oh. you, you, there's a law where they won't be put into there's a There's a new law now, to, yeah. ..so that they feel a little bit more... Of yeah. Help, ..if you can feel any better We met these two sisters yeah. as well that, that had been separated and told individually that each of them didn't want to know each other. Oh. So it kept them away from each other until they met each other and they were like, I can't believe that this is... And did you talk to them both? Spoke to them both about their and situation. And did they explain why that had happened? Like, did they explain they... why they said that to both the... girls? No. See, the girls didn't know why that happened. We couldn't really get to the bottom no. of it. So the independent reviewer said that to change the system, cos it's broken, it's going to mm. cost £2 billion. Yeah. And he said it's a, it's a, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to change the system. Mm. And the government have taken this review and they've said that they're going to release tw uh, £200 million, which is just not enough. It's not going to scratch the surface. Mm. So this documentary, for me, I, I really wanted to... I thought when we started it, I was going to be able to change some, some laws, push some, some policies through and maybe try and change the system myself. Mm. But I, I, I realised quite no, early on it's that... Not, no. it's I not. I mean, then. the independent yeah. review said it, didn't it, that it's at breaking point. It completely is. And, and you think, actually, that investment is going to help with the future generations and maybe cut back crime statistics, yep. because a lot of them will end up turning to crime because they're so desperate. Yeah. But what about you personally? You, t you mentioned your mum, Kiffy, and yeah. two, uh, foster she fostered two kids. You're still in touch with them, aren't you? Yeah, so, so my mum's first child, um, she wasn't from the same background culturally as, as us. And at the time, they, they tried to match their children up culturally with backgrounds that were uh, similar. So we had our first little girl, and we had her for, like, 
from six months till she was like four years old. Oh. And honestly, we loved her so much. But did we you knew... think she was just your sister? Did you accept like that? Yes, me. Well, almost like she was our daughter. Me and my sister's right. daughter as well. Yeah. And we they really grieved over that. But we knew it was the right thing for her to go somewhere permanently. Mm. But we still see her. She was at mine and Stacey's wedding. She comes to birthdays. She calls my mum Nan. Lovely. Yeah. Um, and then my mum got another little boy called Daniel when he was eight years old. And Daniel now he still lives with us. He's at university yeah. and he's he's doing amazing things. And and that's another little thing I think to myself: if we never got hold of Dan, all of that, mm. all of that potential would not have been yeah. fulfilled, but, you know. So if you're fostering, so say with your foster sister, yeah. Um, if at that point your mum had have said when she was four, actually we she's really happy here and we're happy no, to keep her, it they're not allowed. Have, it wouldn't have been possible at the time. I don't know if the policy's the same now. Um, but with Daniel, it's long term now, so Daniel will be with us forever. Forever. You like, I picked him up from university. That's lovely. He's just yeah. so yeah. Yeah. But we say to Daniel all yeah. the time, Dan, you do know you're my mum's favourite out of all of us, <laughs> like. <laughs> you're my mum's favourite. Yeah. And we say to him, like, as much as you think we've we've given you something, the joy and and it's what really you've given us lot as a family, you've yeah. brought us together, yeah. we couldn't repay that, Dan. Well, so I want to say well, well done to your mum. Your mum, fantastic. Congratulations on the documentary for highlighting it as well, because oh. there are so many children that are underprivileged that yeah. are getting... Mm. ..falling through well, the... That's what I thought. I thought, if we're not going to change anything, at least we can we can shine Identity. a light on Absolutely. the subject. And you said, you know, we saw you getting very upset there, but you say part of that is that you feel guilty. Well, oh, why is that? It was so difficult, because obviously I've got kids and I, I, I put my kids in that situation and that, I found it so difficult to come home, leave them kids in them situations, mm. feeling that they were the way they were. They didn't know what was happening tomorrow, next week. Mm. And then coming home to my family and just you know, feeling so lucky mm. and blessed, mm. of so guilty at the same time that oh, I don't really want to kind of enjoy this because I know that they're there mm. in the same situation. And with the very... Sorry, there's one point just to make, because you're known as the cheeky chappy, you know, mm. all full of fun and life and everything. So you've done a serious documentary. Yeah. What do you think you learned about the frustration of not being able to change something during the seriousness of filming that? Um, I, at the beginning, I was really frustrated. I, I felt really disappointed in myself, frustrated, felt a little bit hopeless with the situation. But I had to kind of embrace the situation. That is the situation. We went to see a lady who works for the government, children's minister. As soon as I come out of there, I knew that, that change wasn't going to happen straight away. And all I could do was make sure people at home watch this. And as a society, we decide it's not, not acceptable because they're not our children biologically, but as a society, we owe yeah. it to them mm -hmm. to give them the best start in life as possible. And, and at the moment, we're fighting them. Yeah. So, and obviously, you and Stacey, between you, you've got six kids, but you've yeah. had a, a chat about... Maybe the possibility of fostering in the future. Yeah, I mean we've seen what what, what were the benefits from my family with my mum and, and Daniel, what it does, and um, we just said if we're physically capable of doing it, uh, we love kids. That you know, once our kids have flown the nest, and we can get rid of them. Yeah, we'll definitely think about. Uh, Make it the dozen. Yeah. Mm. Well, yeah. you're going to stay with I us, Joe. Been around for ages, <laughs> <isn't> you? <laughs> you're going to stay with us, uh, yeah. and we'll have a little bit more of a chat about. Life with uh, you, Stacey, and the kids. Before that, Joe Swash is back with us. Now, though, we were talking about granny texting. Yeah. What about you and Stacey? Are you granny texters? I think I'm. The, I think I'm two hands and two thumbs. thumbs. That's what yeah. I yeah. Two hands. Maybe that's granny. My fingers are not long enough to do it with one hand, so <laughs> I have to use both. I think. But yeah. I didn't know it was called granny texting. My nan can't text. No, exactly. And if they do, they do it like that. And what yeah. about kisses? Oh, yeah. Well, no, no kisses. I, I, I generally put one kiss down. To everybody. Um, to everyone. And but Stacey gets Stacey one Stacey gets well. a couple, yeah. Six. She gets a few more. She gets three. Well, the, oh, I yeah. love you, Tom oh, Jones. But then I, I, I don't really get three back sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not all about giving to receive. Yeah, like. If, if you don't get a kiss back, you think, oh, no, I'm in trouble. I'm like, oh, no, she's what found out I, I didn't do the dishwasher. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm in trouble. Uh, so how is life at home with... with Six children in and yeah. out of the place. It's really good. Like today, I've brought Rex in to work with me, so he's he's mm. downstairs, and I've dropped the other two, um, Belle and Rose, at my mum's house. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, I'm just getting them out there. <laughs> <and living places. laughs> but me and Stacey's schedules at the minute are a little bit heavy, so yeah, we we generally try to have one person, one of us, with them at all time. Um, because, you know, there are kids. Mm. Um, but, yeah, no, it's busy at the minute, but we wouldn't have it any other way. But I hear you've scheduled a kids-free holiday for yourselves. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, for me... For you and Stacey? Oh, no, I'm going fishing at the weekend. That's what you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, yeah, I'm going fishing. No, me and Stacey, we went to a wedding um, last week or the week before in Stroudsburg. Stroudsburg. Did you interrupt it? We were talking Sal about that Salzburg. earlier. Salzburg. Salzburg, that's it. And it was in the house. See that house? That's the house from The Sound of oh, Music. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, oh lovely. Wow. Yeah, so it's beautiful, but it was so nice for me and Stacey to spend a little bit of time Without, without kids. kids. Yeah. I and mean, being able to put my hands to my face without smelling like poo under my nose. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So it was nice. So nice and, and being able to <laughs> eat with both hands. Yeah, without a baby hanging off your butt. I bet you just slept all the time, though. That's what you always do when you I go away without didn't. kids. <laughs> 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 I've done a bit of both. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was lovely. It was really nice. But we missed the kids, so we had to get yeah. back to them, you know. So do you think you'll have more? I, I mean, look. I mean, look, it's not... <laughs> I think you're addicted never you never never. I do yeah. love. We do love having kids. And it seems to me that every time they go from, like, three months to toddlers, Stacey's like, oh, yeah. she gets the bug again. Yeah. But I love kids, so, yeah. Mm. I mean, I'll definitely have more, but I don't think it's in our future yet. You can mm. move into that sound of music. How many found trucks? Yeah, Von Trots trucks were there? Yeah, Eight, I, I think, ten. You're moving there very well. Joe, lovely, lovely to Thanks, see you. Thanks, mm. ladies. Thank you very much. see you. Thank and you. Uh, Joe's documentary we were talking about earlier, uh, Joe Swash, Teens in Care, BBC One, tomorrow night at 9pm. <laughs>